Hello and welcome back to our returning viewers. If you're new to this channel, we do basic analysis of technology companies for retail investment. Uh, today I thought we'd look at Velodyne LiDAR Inc, uh, which produces various mapping sensors for automated vehicles and drones. So with these videos, we concentrate on using SWOT analysis to look at the potential of the company. Uh, SWOT analysis is the strength of the company, the weakness of the company, the opportunities of the market, and the threats that the market might pose to your investments. But first, a word from our sponsors. So you really came here to ask, should you buy this stock? Well, let's have a look. Well, marketzen.com have described this as a good buy and have forecast $3 per share going forward. Although the overall opinion appears to be to hold if you've already got the stock uh, and to sell if the market looks like it's gonna get any worse. If we're ignoring market conditions and just looking at the stock itself, uh, well, let's look at the company. Uh, the technology is quite advanced. It's a necessary component for most of the AI which is coming up in the next generation of technology. So we're talking drones, we're talking automated vehicles, we're talking about factories that are automated. It's a vital component of everything we're doing as AI takes over and everything becomes automated. If you're playing a long-term game, the stock price it looks like it's well over a thousand percent possible. Uh, but short-term, who knows? There isn't a lot of cash coming in towards it. Although they have recently started signing up with uh, various other companies. A quick scan through Google News will show that uh, Velodyne LiDAR signed a multi-year agreement with Yamaha Motor. Um, they're producing the kind of drones that you get in factories that move all the bits and pieces around. Um, so that's good news. The technology obviously is selling and um, if you go through their website, if you look at the type of staff they have, uh, there's some cutting edge staff there, there's some cutting edge engineering. It looks like it's got uh, quite a lot of investments backing it up. Um, it's just the amount of cash coming in at the moment. With everything that's going on in the world, this is uh, basically where we're at as like an R&D situation where people are going to be buying the components, putting everything together and then selling it three, four, five years down the line. As that stands, this stands in quite a good position. It's it's kind of like Tesla was maybe four or five years ago. Um, and it's just a company that's ready to mature. Having said that though, Veldyne isn't a new company. It's been around since 1983. Uh, its current CEO is a guy called Ted Tuzbury. Um, it has 407 employees. It's a medium sized company. Um, and has a, a, a reasonable footprint over in the States. Uh, most of their sales appear to be uh, companies like Germany, Japan, uh, and America. There's a, a danger, obviously, that um, it hasn't expanded that much and is just a component company waiting for something bigger to grow. It's still waiting for a wider market economy that's gonna grab hold of the technology and run with it. Now you are seeing it in automated vehicles. You are seeing it in um, drones uh, for various reasons that you would need drones. I mean, it's, it's a great technology. It maps out everything around you. So say if um, you're in emergency services and you pick your drone up, rather than just having the camera going over, you're gonna have like a, a, a scan of everything. I mean, that's basically what LADAR is. It's laser radar. It will take an entire image of it three dimensionally of the area and allow somebody on the ground to basically look around. That's basically what a car does when it's, it's moving automatically through traffic. When the AI is in charge, it just scans the entire area and the um, AI within it will basically just interpret that and allow it to drive without hopefully crashing or running people over. This is where that company specializes in it. That's part of the problem. It's not doing the bigger thing, but that's really complicated the comp technology in itself and does require lots of individual companies to come together to kind of affect what they're doing. That's probably going to be what's holding it back, um, but it's also its strongest thing and it's the thing that's going to allow it to grow going forward. But can it hold on without other competitors coming in, grabbing hold of what it's doing? How simple is the technology once it becomes public? I don't know. I don't know how much of a market it can, it can hold on to and retain, um, given that, that eventually the technology will be mass produced. 
So if we assume that it can hold on to a uh, particular market share, what are we talking about here? Well, if it has exclusive access to vehicles in the States, then we're probably talking Ford, we're talking Tesla, uh, we're talking anything that Google's got involved with. That potentially for the American market could be a complete replacement of its entire stock. Um, so I don't know, we're probably talking three, four, five billion in sales, possibly. It really depends on how many cars it's able to get into. Will it be all cars? Not just all cars, we are talking factories, we are talking drones as well. So I think a, a bonus, maybe if it took out took 10% of the American market and similar kind of around the rest of Asia and Europe, yeah, it could do, it could be a huge company, um, but it's never going to get to that size. It's always going to have like a, a small kind of cut or anything else, and it would probably end up being bought out by other companies. That's a very long plan. Um, automated vehicles, although they are becoming uh, legalized around the world, they're not in total operation around the world. Um, how can I put this? They're not um, fully legalized in every country, and they are still viewed with uh, novelty at best and uh, a paranoid suspicion at worst. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we're probably talking this entire generation really before that kind of technology um, is accepted worldwide. Uh, in factories, you're basically putting people out of work, um, but you're going to get a lot of the scrupulous people that want to have them in there. So Amazon's probably going to expand its portfolio with them. And uh, yeah, I imagine that, that there's potentially a couple of hundred billion in sales possibly for them as they uh, progress and um, basically go for walk dominance. Okay, some market threats. It's quite simple. Uh, if we start off with uh, acceptance, well, it's you are putting people out of jobs. If you're talking automatic vehicles, you're talking about putting taxi drivers out of jobs. If you're talking uh, drones, you're talking, well, that would help. I mean, we've seen that in the um, war in Ukraine, between Ukraine and Russia, that drones have become an incredibly vital resource there. So for military use, yeah, it's gonna expand like crazy. Um, but if you're talking about uh, the, the kind of automatic systems you get in factories um, and in warehouses, yeah, again, you, you're talking about putting people out of work. This could turn a, a complete um, pushback against the technology as a whole for any automatic technology and the LiDAR systems that go with it. Uh, this could potentially be outlawed depending on what kind of government you've got in. You would rely, be relying essentially on a centre-right government in every single country for it to be accepted everywhere. I can't see that happening. Um, when Uber, the uh, pseudo-taxi um, operating company came in the app, that allowed people to uh, basically uh, rent themselves out as taxi drivers all over the world. Uh, the pushback against that was colossal with established taxi firms blocking roads. I can see that happening again with this. I can also see that happening with warehouses, um, with the general public. So I think that will constrain what this company is able to sell. And by the time it was accepted, I think the technology would be established enough um, that um, other companies could produce the stuff cheaper, engineers could produce the software cheaper um, and mass produce it and so its market share would then be restricted. Again, I still think it has potential to grow but the overall threat from that I think is even bigger than um, the world economy at the moment. In simple, this is a really interesting company. Um, I, I like the, the Velodyne, it's very 1980s. Um, the technology is really interesting. It has fantastic potential in many multiple places. It's not just the uh, scanny, lasery thing, a part of the LiDAR system. It is all software engineering. Um, it's the management of the company that goes with it. Um, it's n not gonna be uh, an Apple where it stands in isolation. I think if it wants to actually, it, be part of the whole thing it's gonna um, have to be more like a, um, a general purpose system that most people can tinker with has great potential but there's a, a massive amount of downsides with this not least the uh, state of the world economy not allowing investment to go on so if you like this video um, yep hit the hit the all the buttons you need to the subscribe button the like button and I'll see you again for the next one okay bye bye for now